when talking about authentication, authorization, and identity providers, I am firmly in the do not invent your own camp. I suggest that you seek industry recommended flows and stick to established software and libraries. We love Microsoft and our preferred identity provider is Azure Active Directory. Sometimes though, we get requests from our clients to use an open source identity provider such as a key clock. And the today's example is how to use key clock with a React front end single page application SPA backed by a .NET Web API backend. Previously, implicit flow was re the recommended grant type for SPA applications. These days, the recommendation for SPAs is to use authorization code flow with proof key for code exchange, Pixie. Great. So uh, let's take a look at the three major parts of the system. Our system consists of the key clock identity provider, the React front-end application, and C Sharp Web API backend application. Note that each of these parts of the system run on its own separate domain. Uh, if you do want uh, to run the sample on uh, your local machine, you could uh, point your host file to a local host. And uh, keep in mind that uh, TLS security is required for authentication. You could kind of sort of configure it to make it work without HTTPS, but you'd have to s find a bunch of settings to flip. So instead of spending time flipping those settings, just spend time setting up uh, self-signed certificates and, and trust those certificates. Yeah, that will be easier. So uh, let's start with uh, the key clock. Uh, in the administration console, once you log in, uh, when you log in for the first time, you would only have master Realm. Uh, Realm is kind of like tenant. And normally you don't create any of your own applications in the master Realm. So you will go ahead and create your own Realm. In our case, it's CloudFit. And in that realm, you'll create a client. The client I created for this example is RWO front end. And uh, when you create the client, uh, most of the settings are straightforward. Pretty much all of them are default. The important ones are all these URL settings which tell the identity provider the correct URLs for the front-end application that's going to be authenticating. And uh, do note uh, this trailing slash in the valid redirect URLs link. So if you are redirecting to the home page after a user has logged in, uh, you will be redirecting to this uh, forward slash link most likely. All right. Uh, there are, however, a couple of advanced settings that you need to pay attention to. Uh, in particular, is this one over here, proof key for code exchange code challenge method do set it to S256. 
Also, while you're here, uh, it's a good idea to check your access token lifespan. It's better to have shorter lifespans, something like five minutes works great, in my opinion. All right, so what else is interesting here? Uh, users. Now, uh, users apply to the entire realm. Uh, you could have multiple clients in the realm and uh, users apply to all the clients in the realm. So uh, let's see the users that I created. I created a couple of users. I created user Bob and user Sergey. Uh, let's take a look at user Sergey first. And in particular, I want to show you what role mappings does the user Sergey have. And if we pick client roles over here. Let's pick our RWO front-end client that we saw earlier. You see that in the assigned roles, I assigned Sergey the meteorologist role. This is a role from our client application. Now, uh, let's take a look at user Bob. And uh, you can see that in the role mappings user bob is not assigned any roles in the rwo front-end application and uh, our end goal with this is uh, to say that while user bob is in the cloud fit realm he is not authorized to use the application he doesn't have any application roles and uh, shortly we'll, we'll see how it works in practice. So this is the key clock, which is the identity provider. And it's a separate application, separate from our front end, separate from our back end. Uh, right now I am running it on my local machine uh, in Kubernetes cluster. You could run it on local machine straight or you could use an already existing key clock installation somewhere on your network. It, it doesn't matter as long as you configure the, uh, the client and uh, all the correct uh, URLs, you're, you're, you're golden. Great. So uh, let us take a look at the uh, front-end application and uh, the front the bulk of the authentication in the fr react front-end application is going to be taken care by this react key clock web library uh, we're going to need a few environment settings uh, we're going to need to tell it where our key cloak server is running. And uh, this is the authority URL. We also need to tell it who is our realm or tenant. What is the name of our application? RWO-frontend, that's the name of our application. And uh, we also have a couple of settings here. We have uh, the URL of our backend application and we have a hash of the required role. Uh, great. Uh, so the authorization URL, realm and client ID we pass to the key clock object, which is a part of this key clock JS library that uh, the uh, React key clock library is based on. And uh, the way it works in the main application, everything that uses authorization and authentication is going to be wrapped into in this React key cloak uh, provider. Uh, great. 
uh, we also specify a couple of options here that are specific to uh, the Pixie authorization method that we want to use and uh, another option is check login iframe uh, which uh, in our case we want to set to false uh, what else is in the front-end application? Uh, we do have uh, a top header that basically tells you whether or not you are logged in. If you are not logged in, it's going to display login button. If you are logged in, it's going to display logout button. Uh, we also have a use Axios custom hook that basically uh, adds barrier authorization header to the access client and uh, we do have a call API uh, component that uses the, the our custom access hook to call the back end API to get some data to get weather forecast fantastic uh, this is pretty much it for the front end let's take a quick look at uh, the back end and our back end is ASP.NET core uh, web API application uh, it is configured to use JWT bearer authentication with these settings it's going to validate issuer it's going to validate audience lifetime Uh, we do want to uh, create an authorization policy and our authorization policy has required role which is the meteorologist role that we saw earlier in the uh, key clock uh, yeah Let's uh, log back into the key clock console to see the troll again. And in the client, uh, client roles, this is, this is the role that we have in this application. And uh, that is the role that uh, we use to create authorization policy. And then we add this authorization op policy to all controllers in the application. So to hit any controller in this application, uh, the user must be a member of that meteorologist role. And also it must be an authenticated user. Pretty easy. Uh, we also need not to forget to configure course policy and in our case we allow the front end to hit the back end and uh, these couple of lines here use authentication and use authorization turn the whole thing on our controller is very simple it's the weather forecast controller you probably seen it a thousand times already uh, whoever hits, hits the this controller gonna get some uh, weather forecast data fantastic right uh, let's go ahead and run our application and see what happens right so we're gonna start it up and uh, let's open it in the web browser our front end okay so once we arrived to the application you see initially we are not logged in so let me make it a little bigger All right so let's go ahead and log in Let's start by logging it as user Bob. As you remember, user Bob 
does have a user account in the CloudFit realm, but he is not authorized to use this application. Uh, so let's log Bob out. Uh, now, see, this button here is uh, what's going to call the back end controller to get the weather forecast. Let's see what happens when we call uh, the API while user is not logged in. We call the API, we get 401 error code, which means user is unauthenticated. Basically, user has not logged in. So now let's log in. Let's log in as Bob. And uh, user Bob is now logged in, but you remember that he is not authorized. So what happens if we call the API as Bob now? Bam. We're still not getting the weather forecast. However, the status code has changed. It's now 403 instead of 401. 403 means unauthorized. So the previous error was 401, unauthenticated. Now we're getting 403, unauthorized. Let's uh, log Bob out and let's log in as Sergey. As you remember, user Sergey does have the needed role to access the application. Uh, however, something is wrong. We're still getting not authorized. I know what's wrong. Uh, for role-based authentication to work, ASP.NET expects the user roles to be listed in the role claim, singular, without S at the end. Keycloak does not add such claim to the authorization token by default. An easy way to make this work is to create a mapper. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go here to the client scopes. Let's go to roles, to mappers, and create a new mapper by hitting this uh, create button over here in the right corner. Uh, we're going to um, name this mapper role and uh, it's going to be uh, the mapper type of user client role because that's what we are mapping, right? And uh, the token claim name is going to be a singular role without S, right? And I think this is it. Now we added the mapper. Bam. Here it is here in the list of mappers. And if we now go log Sergey out and log him back in, We now see that user Sergey is logged in and is authorized to use the application. So let's go ahead and call the API now. And we are getting weather forecast. Hooray. This is it. We can call it again and get a different forecast every time we call it. This is it. Easy, right? Thank you. I appreciate your attention.